Bismillah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya'i wa al-mursaleen, Nabiyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in, wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawmiddin. Amma ba'd, Allahumma khfir lana wa li shaykhina wa li walidina wa li al-muslimin. Faqad qala Allahu jalla wa ala fi kitabihi al-majid. Bismillah, Alhamdulillah. والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وأصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين أما بعد فبفور وي ستارت بالصورة الملك The merit of صورة الملك has been The merit of صورة الملك has been narrated by the علماء and there is a hadith, the hadith of Abu Huraira and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said, Inna suratan, inna suratan fil Qur'an, verily a surah in the Qur'an, thalathuna ayah, 30 ayat. Shafa'at li sahibiha hatta ghufira lah. Has... Shafa'at li sahibiha. The shafa'a is intercession, meaning has interceded to uh, the person, sahibuha, you know, the sahibuha in Arabic is like the companion. So it has interceded for this person who the messenger said, sahi li sahibiha. Li sahibiha meaning the, comp- and in literal, the literal meaning is the companion of it. So it interceded for the person. Until it was, he was pardoned. He was forgiven. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that verily there is a surah in the Quran which has interceded for uh, its, uh, uh, for the person, sahibuha, meaning the person who recited it and has taken good care of it. Uh, uh, and he was Forgiven. Tabarak al-ladhi biyadihi al-mulk. Meaning Surah al-mulk. Naam. Ahsan Allah ilaykum. Faqad qala Allah jalla wa ala fi kitab al-majid. Blessed be he in whose hands is dominion. Uh, in Surah al-mulk, Allah azza wa jal says, Blessed be he in whose hand is dominion. And he has power over all things. Who yeah. has created death. Who's in his hand is dominion. You see, when they translated the Quran, they did not say his pleasure, his power, like we saw yesterday. So we know that these brothers who are translating here are Salafis. They are upon the way. May Allah, this is what we see, and this is what is apparent to us. So we say, So they are so when they make mistakes and they say, for example, like what we read yesterday, the pleasure of Allah instead of the face of Allah, this is only a mistake. So we apologize for our dear brothers. Naam, and this is the translation. Yad is translated to hand, not translated to something else. Wedge is translated to face. We don't make, we don't distort the uh, uh, the Quran and the meanings of the Quran. Naam. Or the sayings of the ulama as well. Naam. Uh, and Allah Azza wa says, Who has created death and life so that he may test you and see which of you is best in conduct and he is the Almighty oft forgiving. Who has created seven heavens, one above the other. No defect will you see in the creation of the most gracious, uh, of the most gracious. Look again, do you see any flaw? No, the most Keep gracious, looking. they translated, they translated the word Ar-Rahman. No. Keep looking again and again, your gaze will come back to you, humbled and very, uh, in parentheses, having found no flaws in Allah's creation. Al-Sheikh Al-Imam uh, Abdul Rahman Al-Si'di, Rahimahullah, he says, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Blessed be he in whose hand is dominion. That is, great and exalted is he whose kindness and generosity encompass all things. 
Part of his greatness again, is that again. What did the Imam Sadi say? Uh, he says that is great and exalted is he whose kindness and generosity encompass all things. Naam. So this is the meaning of tabarak. Tabarak ay ta'adama wa ta'ala. So this is from the exaltedness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. Okay, the Sheikh says, part of his greatness is that in his hand is dominion and sovereignty of both the upper and lower realms. For it is he who created them and controls them as he wills. On the basis of universal and religious decrees and in accordance with his wisdom. Part no, of his not and in accordance. There is a mistake here. Not and in accordance. No, the uh, uh, the 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 religious and and uh, 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 destined decrees or the rulings that are based on religiously and decreed through qadar. At li At meaning that. The uh, the uh, uh, can you can you reread just let's see what what is the translation of the last part to the decrees the religious and yes uh, mm -hmm. and by means of which he created uh, what was this now for it is he who created them and controls them as he wills on the basis of universal and religious decrees and in accordance... universal. Universal and religious decrees in accordance in accordance to his uh, wisdom, not and in accordance to his wisdom. No, in accordance. So the religious and universal degree decrees are in accordance with his wisdom. You understand, Akhi? They're not separate. They are not separate from the wisdom of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and this is important. Now. <laughs> this is what the Imam Al Saadi said. This is what the Imam Sa'di said. So the, the addition and uh, follow and so on, this is an addition. The Imam Sa'di did not say that. In Arabic, the Imam Sa'di said, فَهُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَهُ وَيَتَصَرَّفُ فِيهِ بِمَا شَاءَ مِنَ الْأَحْكَامِ الْقَدَرِيَّةِ وَالْأَحْكَامِ الدِّينِيَّةِ التَّابِعَةِ لِحِكْمَتِهِ نعم. Then the Sheikh says, part of his greatness is his perfect mind, by means of which he has power over all things. And by means of which he created all that he created of mighty entities, such as the heavens and the earth. Allah then says, Azzawajal, who has created death and life, that is, he decreed for his servants that he would give them life, then cause them to die. Allah then says, so he may test you and see which of you is best in conduct. Sheikh Sa'di says, that is most sincere and most correct. Allah created his servants and brought them into this world, and he has told them that they will move on from it. He has issued commands and prohibitions to them and tested them with desires that hinder them from complying with his commands. Whoever submits to the command of Allah Azza wa Jal and does good deeds, Allah will give him a good living in both realms. But whoever goes along with his whims and desires and turns away from the command of Allah, he will have an evil recompense. <clears throat> uh, at this ayah, Tabarak al-Ladhi khalaq al-Mawta al-Ladhi khalaq al-Mawta wal-Hayata liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsan amala. Al-Imam al-Tabari rahimahullahu ta'ala has narrated in Bisanadihi al-Hasan, his authentic chain of narration, and Qatada. Qatada is one of the Tabi'een, one of the Tabi'een. And he was a student of uh, Ibn Abbas, the cousin of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is known, Qatada ibn Da'ama al-Sadusi. So Qatada said, so this is, uh, and as I have said before, this is authentic. I'm not going to mention anything that is not authentic. So Qatada said in the tafsir of this ayah, الذي خلق الموت والحياة, the one who has created life and death, or death and life, قال, he said, أذل الله بن آدم بالموت, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humiliated and humbled us, the son of man, has humiliated and humbled the son of man with death. وجعل الدنيا, and he has made this worldly life, Dara 
hayatin and has made this worldly life an abode of life and an abode of death, meaning an abode of life and death. And he has made the hereafter dara jaza'in wa baqa, an abode of reward and the jaza, meaning reward or punishment, both of them. So the reward could be a good reward or a punishment. So this is the meaning of jaza. So has made it a an abode of reward wa baqa, and dwelling, meaning what? Meaning everlasting life. So the hereafter is an abode of everlasting life and an abode for either uh, uh, and an abode of either reward or punishment naam sallallahu alaykum faqad qala allah jalla wa ala and he is the almighty shaykh abd rahman saidi rahimahullah says to whom belongs all might by means of which he subjugates all things and all creature creatures and all creatures submit to him oft forgiving meaning of those who do wrong, fall short and commit sins, especially if they repent and turn to him. For then he will forgive their sins, even if they reach up to the clouds of the sky, and he will conceal their faults, even if they were so many as to fill the earth. Allah says, who has created seven heavens, one above the other. They are, uh, they are not all on one level. He has created them in the most beautiful and precise manner. Allah says, and uh, Allah says, no defect will you see in the creation of the most gracious, Ar-Rahman. Uh, that is, you will not see any flaws or faults in it. Once all the imp- all imperfections are ruled out, there will only be perfect yeah. beauty. That is her. Ma tara fi khalqi rahmani min tafawut. Meaning flaws or deficiency. So tafawut. This is the explanation of tafawut. Tafawut a khalalun wa naqs. Naam. All once all imperfections are ruled out, they will be they will only be perfect per, perfect beauty that is harmonious in all aspects, in its color, shape, and loftiness, and in all that it contains of the sun, moon, and heavenly bodies, both stationary and moving. Because its imperfection is well, uh, sorry, Afwan, because its perfection is well known, Allah Azza wa Jal instructs us to look at it repeatedly and reflect upon all its aspects. And He Azza wa Jal says, Look again and reflect upon it. Do you see any flaw? That is, do you see any shortcoming or defect? Naam, futur. Hal tara min futur, ay naqsin wa khtilal, a shortcoming or discrepancy or flaw. طيب, when it comes to the to the seven samawat, so the the seven skies or the seven heavens, the Sheikh, what did he say? He said, "أي كل واحدة فوق الأخرى ولسنا طبقة رادة." Each one is above the other, and they are not all integrated into one another. Now you might question, you might, يعني, you might wonder, let's say, is there spaces between them, or are they one after the, the other? Two sayings for the people of ilm. Two sayings for the people of the ilm. And Ibn Kathir ta'ala, has mentioned this. And the Sheikh, uh, Imam Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah ta'ala, he turns toward the saying that there is space between them. That there is a space between each and every heaven or sky. And then, you go on to the ayah, هَلْ تَرَى مِنْ فُطُورٍ Now, uh, also Imam al-Tabari, rahimahullah ta'ala, uh, uh, with his authentic chain of narration uh, on Qatada, on the authority of Qatada, has mentioned that Qatada said, هَلْ تَرَى مِنْ فُطُورٍ The meaning, هَلْ تَرَى مِنْ خَلَلٍ يَبْنَ آدَمْ Do you see of a خَلَل خَلَل meaning what? Uh, flaw or discrepancy. Do you see a flaw? O oh, son of, of Adam, son of man. But when we look at the when we look at the Imam Sa'di, he said Naqsun wa ikhtilal. The same thing. Ikhtilal is khalal. It's the same thing. So ya ikhwa, now I brought to you what one of the Imat al Salaf said. One of the people of Tafsir of the Tabi'een said. Did he say, did the Imam Sa'di say what he said exactly or not? 
Who can answer me? <clears throat> Let me look at the chat. Nobody. Tayyib Akhi Ayman, since you are the one who's active and reading. Did the Imam Sa'di say something other than what Qatada said? Imam Sa'di said they are not all on one level. No, that's not what I'm asking. I'm saying, Now, we mentioned Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir is not a Tabi'i. Now, uh, uh, Qatada, we're talking about Qatada. Qatada is from the Tabi'in. He was taught by Ibn Abbas. And Ibn Abbas was taught by the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Ibn Abbas said, هَلْ تَرَى مِنْ خَلَلِ يَبْنَ آدَمْ Do you see a flaw, O son of man? Al-Imam al-Sa'di, هَلْ تَرَى مِنْ فُطُورِ He said, a نَقْصٌ وَاخْتِلَالٌ so he said what? A flaw? So it's the same thing. Abdul Tawab, Sheikh Abdul Tawab says it's the same thing. Absolutely, yes, it's the same thing. And I have made this claim before and I will make it again. And actually I might uh, keep on doing this from now on when it comes to the, the tafsir uh, dars. To expand a little bit because we didn't want to expand because we had a long way to move. Uh, 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 you see that the, uh, the ulama that we always say, bin Baz bin Uthaymeen, uh, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Ibrahim, Sheikh al-Saudi, Sheikh al-Shanqiti, Sheikh al-Albani, Sheikh so-and-so, they are upon the way of the Salaf. How? Look with your eyes right now. Al-Imam al-Saudi is saying exactly what Qatada said when it came to the tafsir of this ayah. He's not making up stuff. Naam. Ahsan Allah, Ibrahim. Ibrahim, 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 فقد قال الله جل وعلا keep looking again and again. شيخ السعدي رحمه الله says what is meant by what is meant is looking often, time and time again. Allah عز وجل says your gaze will come back to you humbled and very, having found no flaws in Allah's creation, that is unable to see any defects defects or um, or gaps even if one is extremely keen to do so. Then Allah begins to describe its yeah. beauty. And the, uh, the Imam al-Tabari, rahimahullah ta'ala, has also, uh, with his Hassan Isnad, عن Ali ibn Abi Talha and ibn Abbas. And I mention Ali ibn Abi Talha because the ulama mentioned that Ali, there is a, a middleman between Ali ibn Abi Talha and ibn Abbas. And we know from the ilm of Mustalah al-Hadith that when there is a person between them and he says, عن, so he said, Ibn Abbas, then this deems this hadith to be weak because there is a missing person, there is a missing link, and we don't know who this missing person is. And since we don't know, then this hadith is weak. But the ulama said that Ali ibn Abi Talha, when he says, Ibn Abbas, the missing link between him and Ibn Abbas is Mujahid, Mujahid ibn Jabr from Sigar al Tabi'in. And as we know that Al Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala says, when, when tafsir comes to you through Mujahid, فهو حسبك. Then it is sufficient for you. Because Mujahid has taken the tafsir from Ibn Abbas more than once. Uh, and he would stop him at each and every ayah and ask him about, about it. The whole Quran. This is what Mujahid did. So Ali ibn Abi Talha and Ibn Abbas in this ayah, khasi and wa huwa hasir. That uh, uh, the, your, your sight would come to you. What is the meaning of He says, humiliated. Ibn Abbas said, meaning humiliated. نعم. Humbled and humiliated. نعم. Then Allah Azza wa Jal begins to describe its beauty. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, We have adorned the lowest heaven with lamps and have made them missiles with which to pelt the devils, and we have prepared, prepared for them the punishment of the raging fire. For those who disbelieve in their Rabb, they will, there will be the punishment of hell, a hapless journey's end. When they are flung into it, they will hear its gasping as it boils up. Almost bursting with rage every time a group is flung into it. Its keepers will ask them, did no warner come to you? 
they will say, yes, indeed, a warner came, did come to us. But we disbelieved and said, Allah has not set down, sent down anything. You are no doubt in grave error. And they will say, if only we had listened or understood, we would not be among the inhabitants of the raging fire. That is, we have beautified the lowest heaven, which is the one that you see and is nearest to you, with lamps, namely the stars, with all their variations in light and brightness. Were it not for the stars that it contains, it would be dark, it would be a dark roof with no beauty or adornment in it. But Allah Azza wa Jal made these stars and adornment, beauty and light for the heaven and a means of navigation in the darkness on land and sea. The fact that Allah Azza wa Jal tells us that he has adorned the lowest heaven with lamps does not rule out the idea that many of the stars are above the seven heavens, for the heavens are transparent. And that is how the lowest heaven is adorned, even if there are no stars in it. And have made them, namely the lamps, missiles in which missiles with which to pelt the devils. Uh, Sheikh, the Sheikh says, who want to eavesdrop on the news of heaven. Allah Azza wa Jal has made these lamps to prevent the devils from receiving news of earth. These are the shooting stars which Allah has prepared in this world for the devils. Allah Azza wa says, and we have prepared for them, yani in the hereafter, the punishment of the raging fire, because they rebelled against Allah and misled their, his servants, likewise with regard to their followers among the disbelievers. Allah has yeah. also prepared for them. So, uh, so if somebody asks you, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the stars? Or somebody asks you, what is the wisdom behind uh, uh, the stars? Uh, just like the Sheikh said, and also uh, Imam Al-Tabari uh, uh, has narrated on the authority of Qatada in Isnadihi Al-Hasan, Bisanadihi Al-Hasan, authentic chain of narration, that he made uh, Qatada made the tafsir of this ayah. He said, Inna Allah Jalla Thanauhu, verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Inna ma khalaqa has only created. هذه النجوم, these stars, لثلاث خصال, for three traits. خلقها زينة للسماء الدنيا. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so this is number one. Huh? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them as an adornment. Adornment meaning what? Decoration. Uh, uh, something to beautify, right? So زينة. خلقها زينة للسماء الدنيا. So they are adornments for the uh, 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 worldly sky. وَرُجُومًا لِلشَّيَاطِينَ And to pelt the shayateen, as in, as in uh, like, uh, 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 what do you call them? Like shooting stars, or, or what do you call them? I, I, anyway, they pelt the shayateen, so they are, they burn the shayateen. This is number two. And number three, وَعَلَامَاتْ يُهْتَدَى بِهَا And signs in which people are guided, meaning towards directions and so on. فَمَنْ يَتَأَوَّلُ مِنْهَا غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ So whosoever explains them otherwise فَقَدْ قَالَ بِرَأْيِهِ Then he has said according to his رأي, to his opinion. Until the, uh, until uh, Qatada said in the end, he said وَتَكَلَّفَ مَا لَا عِلْمَ لَهُ بِهِ And he has burdened, burdened himself with that which he has no knowledge of. So anybody who says other than that, he has no knowledge of. And if he says something other than these three things, now I am explaining what he said. Uh, so he has burdened himself with that which he has no knowledge of. Naam. Sallallahu alaykum. Faqad qala Allahu jalla wa'ala the punishment of the raging fire because they rebelled against Allah Azza wa Jal and misled his servants. Likewise, with regard to their followers among the disbelievers, Allah has also prepared for them the punishment of the raging fire. Hence, he Azzawajal, says, for those who disbelieve in their Rabb, there will be punishment of hell, a hapless journey's end, in which its inhabitants will be greatly humiliated. When they are flung into it, i.e. by way of humiliation, they will hear its gasping, that is, a loud and frightening noise, 
as it boils up, almost bursting with rage. That is, it will almost split apart and break into pieces because of its intense rage towards disbeliever, towards the towards the disbelievers. So what do you think it will do to them when they are in it? Then Allah Azza wa Jal mentions the rebuke of the keepers of hell to its inhabitants. Every time a group is flung into it, the, its keepers will ask them, did no warner come to you? That is, with regard to your situation now and the fact that you deserve hell, it is as if you were not told about it and received no warning concerning it. Allah Azza wa Jal, then Allah Azza wa Jal says, then they will say, uh, they will say, yes, indeed, a warner came to us, but we disbelieved and said, Allah has not sent down anything. You are no doubt in grave error. Thus, they will combine disbelief in the particular messenger who was sent to them and disbelief in everything that Allah sent down. But they will not stop there. Rather, they declare that all the messengers who brought the warning to them and who were guided and guided others were misguided. And they did not stop at describing them as being merely misguided. Rather, they claim that they went far astray. What stubbornness, arrogance, and misguidance could be equal to this? And they will say, no. acknowledging. So in the ayah, Takadu Tamiyazu Min Al Ghaith, Ibn Abbas says, Tatafarraq. Tatafarraq. So if we wanted to translate Tatafarraq, which is not an easy translation, we would say, Split asunder. This is what it means. طيب, and then for the uh, ayat, نعم قالوا بلا قد جاءنا نذير فكذبنا وقلنا ما نزل الله من شيء إن أنتم إلا في ضلال كبير طيب there is a hadith there is a hadith uh, 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 in Abu Dawood and uh, 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 in Musnad al-Imam Ahmed as well uh, نعم and al-Imam al-Albani رحمه الله تعالى said it is صحيح the hadith is that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said لَنْ يَهْلَكَ النَّاسُ حَتَّى يَعْذِرُوا أَوْ يُعْذِرُوا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ So I don't know, do we have this hadith in translated form? Because I don't have a translation for it. Uh, maybe we could take a, a minute to look for the translation. I will do that inshallah. لن يهلك الناس حتى يعذروا. Let's see if we have a translation, because that would save me some effort. نعم. Here we go. نعم. So this is in Sunan Abu Dawood. So the hadith in English is: the people will not perish until their sins and faults become abundant, and there remains no excuse for them. This is a good translation, because they. The translation is very difficult to translate su such a hadith. So what they did is they looked at the meaning of the hadith and they translated it. And the Mannawi rahimahullah ta'ala said fi fayd al-qadir, when he is explaining this hadith, ay takthuru dhunubuhum wa ayubuhum, that their uh, uh, sins and their flaws, they increase. Naam. Wa ayubuhum wa yutrakun and they abandon fixing their flaws and their uh, 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 sins. So it is made clear the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is punishing them. So the, the punishment becomes, it becomes clear and mandatory upon them, and mandatory upon them. So this hadith, if we go back, if we go back to the ayah, what did they say? وَقَالُوا They said, لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُ أَوْ نَعْقِلُوا مَا كُنَّا فِي أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ If we heard and if we uh, 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 understood and took heed, مَا كُنَّا فِي أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ We wouldn't have been in amongst those who are in the hellfire, the blazing fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they, so they what? 
فاعترفوا they have admitted their sins their flaws their disbelief بذنبهم فسحقا لأصحاب السعير سحقا meaning بعدا so removed they are the people of the hellfire and this hadith in this hadith where the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says they are not doomed they are not doomed they will not perish and be doomed until their sins and faults become abundant a lot and there remains no excuse for them because they see just like Imam Mannawi said they will see on the day of judgment that they deserve it and they have no excuse and they see that they are deserving of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it becomes mandatory for them and they have no excuse so they so they will be thrown in the hellfire we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us now and they will say acknowledging that they did not deserve to be guided if only had they listened or understood we would not be among the inhabitants of the raging fire so they will state that they did not have the means to be guided which is the willingness to listen to what Allah sent down and what the messengers brought and the ability to understand that which will benefit one to help one to comprehend the realities of things. Give precedence to what is good and be deterred from everything that would lead to negative consequences. But they did not listen or understand. This is in contrast to the people of certain faith and knowledge. Those who are prominent in terms of sincerity and faith. They supported their faith by means of textual evidence so they listened to that which Allah, uh, which came from Allah Azza wa Jal and was brought by the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they learned it in the sense that they understood it and acted upon it. They also supported their faith by means of rational evidence. So they recognized the difference between guidance and misguidance, right and wrong, good and even. Their level of faith was commensurate with what Allah Azza wa had blessed them with of understanding of the rational and textual evidence. Glory be to the one who singles out for his grace whomever he wills and blesses whomever he wills among his slaves and forsakes those who are not fit for good. Allah Azza wa says concerning these people who will enter hell acknowledging their wrongdoing and stubbornness Thus, they will acknowledge their sin, so away with the inhabited, inhabitants of the raging, so away with the inhabitants of the raging fire. The Sheikh says, that is, away with them, may they be lost and doomed. How wretched and bad they are, for they have missed out on the reward of Allah. Yeah. The Sheikh said, أي بعدا لهم وخسارة وشقاء. He said, بعدا. بعدا meaning what? The far thrown are they and far removed are they and this is also what ibn abbas said and this is what ibn abbas with the same isnad from the tabari uh, the hasan isnad and ali ibn abi talha and ibn abbas in the saying of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَسُحْقًا لِأَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ ibn abbas said بُعْدًا بُعْدًا meaning what far removed they are and thrown away نعم. That is, away with them, may they be lost and doomed. How wretched and bad they are, for they have missed out on the reward of Allah Azza wa and are the inhabitants of the blazing fire, which will burn their bodies and reach their hearts. Then Allah, then Allah Azza wa says, Verily, those who fear their Rabb unseen will have, their, will have forgiveness and a great reward. The Shaykh yeah. says, having Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala بالغيب بالغيب الغيب is that which is the unseen and the unknown so they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala بالغيب remember the hadith Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says لهم مغفرة وأجر كبير they have a, a great forgiveness and a great reward remember the hadith in al-Bukhari سبعة يظلهم الله في ظله يوم لا ظل إلا ظله that's seven Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, 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 give them uh, 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 meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, what do you say in shade. 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 will shade them 
uh, at the, uh, on the day where there is no shade but the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and throughout the hadith uh, he mentioned what salawat rabbi wa salamu alayhi he said rajulun dhakar allahu khaliya fafadat ayna and the man who has mentioned Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what khaliyan alone fafadat ayna then his, his, his eyes teared up nah. So he's, he has, uh, يعني, he fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's mentioned Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while he is alone from the, 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 the from uh, not in front of people in order to show off and people look at him or anything that has to do with the dunya, no. From his heart and he was alone and he mentions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so and his, his eyes were meaning his eyes started tearing up. Naam. <laughs> Having mentioned the, the situation of the doomed evil doers, Allah now mentions the situation of the righteous and blessed. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Verily, those who fear their Rabb unseen, that is, in all circumstances, even in situations where no one can see them except Allah, they do not commit acts of disobedience towards Him, and they do not fall short with regard to that which He has enjoined upon them. Allah says, Will have forgiveness. Naam. So if, therefore the, the meaning of the ayah becomes what? That those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Hidden from people Without people seeing them So they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly When they are alone This is what the shaykh is saying He says Meaning in all their conditions Even in the condition in which no one can see them except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thus, ya ikhwa, I brought the hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari. Because when part of this uh, 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 reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them, gives them is the shade on the day in which there is no shade but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because a person, huh, the rajulun, a person, khaliyan. He mentioned Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, meaning the man is alone. So his, his eyes started tearing up, meaning he started crying. So he's fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a state where no one can see him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is included in this ayah. And just like uh, Al-Imam Al-Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala has mentioned, na'am. <laughs> Allah Azza wa says, will have forgiveness. And if Allah forgive their, forgives their sins, he will protect them from the evil thereof and protect them from the punishment of hell. And they will have a great reward, which is what Allah has prepared for them in paradise of eternal bliss, a vast domain on going pleasures, enjoyment of all that they desire, palaces, lofty dwellings, beautiful hur, and servants. And even greater than that will be the pleasure of the most gracious, which Allah will bestow upon the people of paradise. Allah Azza wa Jal then says, Whether you conceal your speech or declare it openly, verily he knows well what is in people's hearts. How could he who created not know his own creation when he is the knower of the sub? وَهُوَ اللَّطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ وَهُوَ اللَّطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقَ وَهُوَ اللَّطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ The ulama say what? The ulama say because creation, the creation is an indication of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Allah's, uh, of Allah's subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge. Because the creation is, indicates, to, indicates that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indicates the ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indicates the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thus this ayah here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَسِرُّ قَوْلَكُمْ وَوِجْهَرُوا بِهِ إِنَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ Verily he knows everything subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even what's hidden in the breast of his creation. أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقَ Does he not know the, uh, 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 the one, uh, what he has created? وَهُوَ لَطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ The ulama say, because... Creation is an indication of the ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. Here Allah speaks of the vastness. Shaykh Abdul Rahman says, Here Allah speaks of the vastness of his knowledge and his all-encompassing knowledge of subtleties. 
Allah says, whether you conceal your speech or declare it openly, that is, it is all the same to him and nothing is hidden from him. Allah says, verily, he knows well what is in people's hearts with all their intentions and wishes. So how about their words and deeds which are heard and seen? Then Allah Azza wa Jal says, giving rational evidence for his knowledge, he says, how could he who created not know his own creation? Uh, how Naam. could the one who... The Sheikh said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving dalil aqli, a rational evidence, not a philosophical evidence. Some people, they try to mix up the two in order to uh, uh, trick you. They say, look, dalil aqli meaning philosophy. No, philosophy is something and a rational evidence or rational reasoning is something else, or reasoning is something else. Philosophy is based on the rulings and the foundations and of the people of philosophy, Greek philosophy and so on. And when they infuse these things into the deen and they say, well, look, it is part of the deen because the deen uses rationality. No, rationality and uh, evidence which depends on rationality, this is used even in the Quran. By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like the Al Imam al Sa'di said, What did he say? So, this is not denied that there, uh, there are things which speak to the reason of man, but that has nothing to do with philosophy. So, when you say the one who has created all this vast, vast creation, doesn't he have ilm? Of course, he has ilm. Rationally, he has ilm. The one who has perfected this creation. Is this philosophy? It has nothing to do with philosophy. Philosophy talks about transcendental truth and metaphysics and all of this garbage nonsense that has nothing to do with anything in this world. These fantasies of whatever you want to call them, people, whatever you want to call them. Sometimes these are even sick fantasies has nothing to do with reality, has nothing to do with what Allah said, has nothing to do with what the messenger of Allah salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi said. And the Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullahu ta'ala, he said, the, the people who indulge in this ilm al-kalam, they should be hit with the ni'al, bil jaridi wa ni'al. They should, the Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullahu ta'ala, these people try to make these things part of Islam and so on. The Imam al-Shafi'i, and if you want, I could bring you tens of the sayings of the ulama when it comes to philosophy. Tens with authentic chains of narration. Don't let anybody trick you into these things. Al-Imam al-Shafi'i and others. And if you want, I'll bring them. We could make a session and I can bring these. So you see what is the ruling on indulging in, in philosophy and whatnot. And people give it names. They change the names. Rationality and I don't know, rational rhetoric and this and that. They only changing the name. And when they, they are taking the kuffar as their role model, because the kuffar, the disbelievers, this is what they do. They say uh, Muslim fundamentalists, fun Muslim uh, extremists, Muslim, I don't know. They change the names. Just say criminals. Just say people who Islam holds as criminals. And what they do is cry, a crime in the eye of Islam and in the, in the religion of Islam. And bring the fatwas of Ibn Baz and so on for these... No, no, they don't do any of this. They say Muslim extremists, Muslim fundamentalists. As of saying that the fundamentals of Islam means killing and doing crimes and blowing up things. No, 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 these are crimes and suicide and all of this is haram in Islam. All of this is forbidden. So they change the names in order for you to accept it. This is what they do all the time. Even when they want to market and advertise for something which is haram, which is not good, which is destructive, they give it a fancy name and they change the names in order for you to what? To accept it. So the same way, they change ilm al-kalam and, and philosophy, they change the name of philosophy, they say, you know, rational rhetoric and this and that in order to do what? In order for you to accept philosophy. No, the Salaf did not accept it. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah did not accept it. Shaykh al-Islam ibn said, for a person who, for a alim, not a mere uh, person who has no ilm or a student of knowledge who's just beginning. And so, no, no, a alim who fortified himself with ilm, he can learn these things only in case of debating with them. So when there is no need for that, there is no need for learning this. So only selected few 
are the ones who learn and indulge in these things in order to reply to the people who are making these claims only, only in this case. But this is not how people are applying this. You understand? This is not how people are applying this. They are making it the core of the religion. When he wants to make da'wah instantly, when he sees somebody wants to make da'wah, he talks about uh, this person's theory about the creation and the cause for the, and this and that. And that. Ya this nonsense, all, and philosophy, and th they start indulging in these terminologies and names. This is nonsense. If you were at the time of the Shafi'i, a Shafi'i said that you should be hit with the jareed and ni'al, meaning that you should be brought up in front of people and you should be hit with the jareed. I, I think yani, what that means is the, 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 uh, like taking a, a branch of, of the trees and ni'al and slippers and you should be hit in front of people so that they see what is, uh, how the people that indulge in philosophy should be treated. This is an Imam al-Shafi. This is Imam al-Shafi. Subhanallah. So uh, 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 this is indulging in these things, ya ikhwa, is destructive. You want to indulge in beneficial knowledge. You want to make da'wah. Make it based on the Quran and the Sunnah. Ya akhwa, why is it so hard nowadays to call people to the Quran and the Sunnah? Why is it so hard? There, there was a, a, I don't know, I saw once a video. A guy was trembling. All of him is trembling. He's like, and he's holding a hair in his hand. And this is the hair of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he's trembling, trembling. And oh, this is the hair I cannot believe. I don't know what he's saying. He cannot believe that this is the hair of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he's a Sufi. He says, I am a Sufi. Ya akhi, you are trembling in front of the hair of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And you are not trembling in front of the hadith of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Al-Bukhari and Muslim is in front of you. Why don't you tremble? You tremble at a hair, which is not the hair of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. All of this is nonsense. All of this is not true. Nothing remains from the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. There is no remnants. Look at what the ulama said. He is trembling because of a hair. You bring him thousands upon thousands of the ahadith of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He doesn't tremble. Doesn't. Doesn't bat an eye, not one single hair on his body moves. Why? Because this is the shaitan that is leading these people astray. This is the shaitan influencing these people to tremble and fear for a hair. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what hair this is. But the sunnah does not move them. The sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not move a hair on their body. Why? Why? Allah al-Musta'an. Allah al-Musta'an. Why has it become so hard for Muslims calling other Muslims, even people who call themselves du'at and da'is, they say, I am a da'i, I am, I don't know what, <clears throat> that uh, we are trying to call them to the Quran and the Sunnah. Why is this so hard? We say, Akhi, leave this nonsense behind you. Leave this philosophy and this nonsense behind you. Let Make da'wah based on the Quran and the Sunnah. What is wrong with this? Why is it so hard? Was the da'wah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in philosophy? Did the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ever mention uh, 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 Plato or Aristotle or Socrates? Or Where are you getting this from? You have Quran and the Sunnah. Khayrul kalam. The best of, of, of words. Kalamullah azza wa jal. Kitabullah azza wa jal. Wa khayrul hadi. Hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the best of guidance is the guidance of the Messenger. So the best of words are the words spoken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran of Allah the Quran, which we have now of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the guidance of his messenger. You will you find a better guidance? Will you find a better book? Subhanallah, why are we con constantly trying to convince people of the Quran and the Sunnah? This should go without saying. A person should tremble and his body moves and he trembles with the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger, not a hair. Allah al-Musta'an. Allah al-Musta'an. At the ignorance of these times. And we see people and the dua, ya ikhwa, the dua should be humble. The dua should be humble and they should have humility and they should humble themselves with others. Not call others imbeciles and I don't know, and this and that, and what's going on? 
يا اخوان humble yourself يا اخي humble yourself and be upon the Quran and the Sunnah don't think that just because you studied philosophies now you are a mountain of ilm you are a mountain of ignorance not a mountain of ilm you want to be a mountain of ilm should be قال الله قال رسول الله قال الصحابة قال سلف هذه الأمة قال محمد بن سرين قال مجاهد قال قتادة قال سعيد بن المسيب قال قال البخاري مسلم الشافعي this is true علم but you come and bring reasoning for somebody who's not even a Muslim somebody who's not even a Muslim you want to call to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I want you start your da'wah with reasoning that was established by a person who doesn't be, even believe in a creator Allah al what and then calling people imbeciles and they are not smart enough no 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 wallahi no you need to to look at a mirror which really shows you for what you truly are ya ikhwa let's humble ourselves ya ikhwa let's humble ourselves ya ikhwa let's humble ourselves we need this and the best truth for us is to seek knowledge to follow the path of knowledge to shut our mouths until we have knowledge years down the line of patience and knowledge and and taking this ilm not from aristotle taking this ilm from the ulama from sheikh salih al-fawzan from sheikh abdul muhsin al-abbad sheikh salih al-suhaimi sheikh salih sheikh sulaiman rahili sheikh abdul razak al-badr sheikh muhammad hisham sheikh the mashayikh and the ulama Bend the knees, bend the knees in front of these mashaykh and ulama. Six years, eight years, 20 years, bend the knees. And then start speaking. Nowadays, anybody comes and says, this da'i is a scholar. Today I saw a discussion in the group. A scholar calling a da'i a scholar. A scholar? He's like Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan. The ulama, يعني you have from the ulama themselves. They said that he is a allama, he is a scholar. Yani if you can bring me now Sheikh Abdul Muhsin al-Abbad, Sheikh Falah Mundakar, Sheikh Saleh al-Luhaydan, Sheikh Saleh al-Fawzan, they themselves said this da'i in English, he is a scholar? I dare you. Where? Where are you getting this from? Because you're speaking without knowledge. That's why. Another person comes and makes tabdi'i. Why are you indulging in these things? Seek ilm first. Seek ilm first. Our Shaykh, Shaykh Al-Allama Falah Mundakar, he said it on multiple occasions, by the way, not just once. He said, this is the last thing a student of knowledge indulges in. The last thing. Now you're indulging in it the first thing. The first thing. You don't know your head from your toe. In the, in the, in the Sharia, in the Islam, you're just, if you wanted to study, you would be at year one, year one in an Islamic university. Still, beginning, beginning. And you are saying, this person is mubtadi. This person is transgress, uh, deviant. This person is kafir. This, ya akhwa, this is not your field. Seek ilm, seek ilm, learn first. Abdul Sheikh Abdul Salam al said that a person asked his sheikh about a certain person. What about this individual? His sheikh said, basically learn bury your head and learn in, in learning you know learn first learn keep on learning keep on learning until people come to you and ask you about people and he says this happened so he uh, this person continued learning all the way until people started asking him about others and these matters you'll not understand now you need ilm you need ilm and it comes it it is more i remember i asked sheikh yusuf sakit about this a uh, sheikh yusuf sakit i asked him about this he said look down the line down the line of ilm, persevere and have patience. This is how ilm comes. 10 years, 12 years, have patience. Don't give up. Don't quit. Continue on the path of ilm. And these things will clear up along the way. And stick to the big ulama. Every sheikh we speak to, stick to the big ulama. Stick to the big ulama. Stick to the people, big ulama. You, you are here studying with me. You are students under me. Here now, in this session, right now. And you are making tabdi of this person and that person. And ya ikhwa, none of you is in this. Uh, uh, yani, Allah al musta'an. Allah al musta'an. None of you should be indulging in this. None of you should be indulging in this. None of you should be saying this person is, I don't know, giving rulings about this person and that person and so on. Ya akhi, 
And so what? In the end for you, so what? Benefit first. Learn ilm first. Learn ilm first. So the question comes up. The question comes up. Should I listen to him? Since you are not sure of him, don't listen to him. Leave him. You yourself, you're saying, I'm not sure about him. Leave him. If you're not sure about him, leave him. Stick to the big ulama. What are you going to lose? The PDFs are there. The uh, books are translated into English. PDFs in English are there. The videos in English are there. So many. The e lectures are there. Explanations of, of uh, audio explanations are there. Why do you go to people you're not sure of? And you go to small student of, students, of, small students of knowledge and you say, scholars? Scholars? Ulama? Like Sheikh bin Baz? Muftis? You know, give me their fatwas. Give me their books that they have written. Give me their tahqiqat. Give me their hawashi. What are you talking about? Some of these people that you're calling scholars cannot even speak Arabic, cannot even understand the Quran. Scholar. And another person comes and says, Mubtadi. Ya akhi, hold your horses, hold your horses. It's so easy for you. This only shows ignorance. Only shows ignorance. And when I said you are all here students studying with me, I mean, how, do you see us engaging in this? Is this what we are? This, is this what we are teaching? La wallah, la wallah. And as we always repeat, as we always repeat, if you're not sure about somebody, then what? Then what? If you're not sure about somebody, don't study with him. If there is, if there is a person that you know is affiliated with a sect, he has this and that in aqidah and so on, leave him, ya akhi, leave him. And replying, if you understood from what I said that replying to people is not from the deen, then you are utterly wrong. Yes, replying is from the deen. And the people of ilm do it. Jazahumullahu khayra. Look at our shaykh, our mashaykh. They reply and they show that which is right and that which is wrong. And they reply to people by their name. And this is what Sheikh bin Baz said and Sheikh bin Usaymin said and so on and so forth. But you are right now in the stage of learning. This is not your place. Learn, ya akhi, first. Let's stick to ilm. There's so much noor. But if this is your way of spending time and entertainment, get to know you're not a student of knowledge. If all, if knowledge for you is just, did you see this person? Did you see that person? This is Kafir. This is Mubtadi. This is Allama. This is I don't know what. And then in the end, it becomes a fight between them. A fight upon what? Upon the deen of Allah? No, upon a person. Ya akhi, a person. A person. He's not a, a delil. We don't say, what is the ruling on this? Well, the saying of Sheikh bin Baz. No. Even bin Baz himself, when, you ask the, when he's asked about the ruling, he says, Allah said, the messenger of Allah said. This is the delil. The delil is not this person said. The delil is Allah said, so now I hate you and you hate me because of this person. And everybody who says anything against this person, he's not good. And anybody, ya akhwah, what is this? Allah al musta'an Allah al musta'an Ya akhwa, let's learn before we speak. Let's learn before we speak. Let's persevere upon learning. Let's persevere upon seeking ilm. Let's be patient and keep on seeking ilm. And stay away from things which will harm us. If you give an advice and people don't listen to you, Alhamdulillah, you've done your part. You've given the advice. But now you have to force people into not listening and this. and Ya akhwa, what is going on? Allah al musta'an Allah al musta'an طيب uh, نعم so here the sheikh said going back ثم قال مستدل بدليل عقلي فمن خلق الخلق واتقنه احسن so who so he who has made this creation and he has perfected this creation كيف لا يعلمه how does he not know it is this philosophy it has nothing to do with philosophy this is reason pure reason نعم وهو اللطيف الخبير until the end اخي ايمن did you where is اخي ايمن did you read the all the tafsir of ayah 14, or is there something left? Ayah 14. No, there is, there is one more paragraph left. No, okay, the uh, ayah 14. Tayyip. No, read the paragraph. <clears throat> then Allah says, giving rational evidence for his knowledge. How could he who created not know his own creation? How could the one who created all of creation and perfected it and made it well, not know it. Then Allah Azawajal says, when he is the knower of the subtle of subtleties, the all aware, whose knowledge is so subtle that he knows what is hidden in people's hearts and minds, 
all that is concealed, secret, and unseen. And it is he who uh, knows what is said privately and that which is yet more hidden of unspoken thoughts. Tell you. Uh, there's, there's, no. there's one thing. Yes. Uh, Sheikh Sidi says the divine name Al Latif, translated here as the knower of the subtle, the knower of subtleties, also has another meaning, which refers to his subtle kindness. He is the one who is most kind to his servant and close friend in a subtle manner, for he bestows upon him kindness from where he does not expect, and he protects him from evil from where he does not realize. He elevates him to the highest status by means that never even cross that never even crossed the mind of the individual to the extent that he may even put him through hardship so that by means of it, he may reach sublime goals and a noble status. Tamma wa lillahi alhamd. Tayyib. Allah <laughs> maghfir lana wa li walidina wa li walidihim wa li dhurriyatihim wa li mashayikhina wa ulamaina wa ulati amrina wa li muslimina wal muslimat wa li mu'minina wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat subhanak Allahum wa bihamdik shadu la ilaha illa ant نستغفرك ونتوب إليك اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين